All right, I gotta go, is my battery charged? 100%, awesome. Shutting down, the battery's dead? Oh, come on. Today, I'm gonna show you how to change an internal battery on newer notebooks. Stay tuned. <sighs> Guess I'm gonna be late. Notebooks used to come with removable batteries, like this little Dell Mini right here that I bring with me on site. Unfortunately, I'm really bad about charging this thing when I get home, so typically it has a dead battery. In fact, it probably has a dead battery right now. But it's nice because I can just hit a clip, take the battery out, plug another one in, and I'm good to go with a fresh battery. Unfortunately, newer notebooks like this HP right here, they've taken that feature away and they put the battery inside the computer. Now this makes it impossible for you to carry an extra battery with you, but it also makes it difficult when the battery inside fails like it has on this computer. So today, I'm gonna show you how to disassemble this computer and replace the battery inside. Let's get to it. Now what you're gonna need to do this is some tools. I'm using my iFixit ProTech Toolkit. I did a video on this a while back. I'll go ahead and tag it here. This is a great kit if you're doing stuff like this often. You're also gonna need a replacement battery for your notebook. I picked up the battery for this one on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I think this was about 40 bucks. So the first thing that we wanna do is flip this notebook over and we're gonna to have to remove the screws from the bottom of the notebook. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and get a Phillips bit here. We're going to go ahead and start removing screws on this thing. The first one I typically take out is the one that holds the CD-ROM in, and you'll notice that one just by the shape of the CD-ROM. So you'll know about where the screw should be. And you can grab a hold of the trim right here and then just pull and then pull the CD-ROM out and then set that to the side. And then go ahead and start removing all the other screws. On this one here, there's only a few that you can see, but there's a couple hidden ones too. And I'll show you how to get to those in a second. You should probably separate your screws in a way that is easy for you to know exactly which screw goes where. Um, I've had this computer apart so many times that I know exactly where everything goes, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you lay them out in a way that makes it easy for you to put it back together, you don't wanna have extra screws when you're done. So the next thing that we need to do is we wanna get some kind of a tool. I'm using this little metal tool here in order to pull these rubber feet up right here. So we're gonna take these feet and we're just gonna go right underneath right here and pull these up. Now, you wanna make sure to be careful here because you don't want the sticky to wear out on these things. But if it does, you can always get some of that really thin 3M double-sided tape to put under here and it'll make them stick again. So once you pull this up, you go ahead and just remove the screws from underneath it. And then you repeat this process on all four of the other feet, at least on this notebook. You're gonna have to go around and figure out which screws you need to remove on your computer because all notebooks are different. But typically, you wanna be really careful and make sure that you remove all the screws because you don't wanna break this back plate when you go to take it off. So I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna remove all these real quick. All right, once we have all the screws removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the back plate right here. And you wanna be really careful when you remove this because just in case you left a screw in that you don't realize, you can actually do damage to this thing. So what I typically like to do is find an area on the back plate that's easy to pull up. On this computer, it happens to be this little spot right here, right behind the CD-ROM. But on yours, just kind of play around with it until you can find a place where you can really kind of get something into there. And then you just kind of start peeling it up right there. And on this one, you can use a tool if you want, as long as you don't damage anything. You just kind of go in and just carefully pry up on this thing and it should come apart. And you kind of go around the case and you just pry as you go around, being real careful not to break anything. 
All right, this one was snapped in really good right there. All right, so now that I have that, I know for a fact that this specific notebook has a little hook inside. So you just kind of have to finagle it and there you go. You can get the back plate off of it. And now once you get the back plate off, you can see the battery right here. And what we're gonna have to do is get everything out of the way, unscrew this battery and pull it out. Now the first piece that I have in the way is this cable that goes to the hard drive. Now your computer may be different, but on this one, you just flip up this little thing here and then you can move that out of the way. Now on this one, you can actually pull the hard drive out because the hard drive is not actually screwed in on this one. It's just held in by these little rubber standoffs right here. So we're going to pull that out of the way and then we're going to remove the rest of these screws right here. Now, some notebook batteries are actually installed with these little clips right here, and some are not. This one right here actually has a traditional notebook battery mount in it, like a newer or older notebook would have. But on this one, it's really easy. On other ones, you would just flip up the connector for the battery and pull it out. So on this one, we should be able to pull the battery out now. And there we go, there's our old battery. And you can definitely see the problem here. This one here is really, really bloated looking. It looks like the cells are definitely failed in this thing. You wanna be really careful with these batteries because if these get punctured, then they can actually cause a fire. So you wanna make sure you dispose of these batteries properly. Don't just pitch it in your garbage can and be in over with it because there's a chance you could start your trash on fire. So make sure to be careful with these batteries. So the next thing we want to do is open up our new battery here. And this new battery actually came with some screwdrivers, but honestly, these things are garbage. Get yourself an iFixit kit. These are great. So I'm going to pull this battery out now. And this one should drop right into place, right where the old one came out. So we're gonna set it in, line it up with our old screw holes. And there we go. We're gonna go ahead and replace our screws now. And this should just be in a reverse of the order we went before. All right, now I'm gonna install my hard drive again. And there we go, the new battery is installed and we can go ahead and put the back plate back on. I'm gonna do that right now. When you put this back plate back on, kind of push it down and clip all of the plastic clips in first, just so it's solid. And then you can start replacing your screws. I like to push it down first just to make sure everything is clipped in because once you start putting screws in it, it starts stiffening it up a little bit and it actually makes it harder to clip down in some cases. Um, this specific computer, I've actually had to take all the screws out again because I had one little clip that didn't clip in and I could not get it in without taking the screws out. So just a little tip. So putting this thing back together is just a reverse of taking it apart. And if you put all your screws in order when you were taking it apart, then shouldn't be anything to put it back together. The important part is, is that once everything is all said and done, you don't want to have any extra screws because if you have any extra screws, then you definitely did something wrong. All right. Once you get these screws in, just go ahead and push down on the feet in order to, for, to stick them back in place. Hopefully your sticky isn't worn out and your feet stay down because you don't, you don't want to lose your feet. Um, a lot of these notebooks that I work on will actually have missing feet on the bottom of them. And when that happens, the notebook actually rocks on flat surfaces and it's a little annoying actually. So I like to keep the feet in place. All right. The last step is to put the CD-ROM back in and go ahead and put in the last screw. All right. Now, most batteries, when you buy them, they'll actually come with about a 50% charge. You don't want to ship a lithium ion battery fully charged or fully dead. So they're usually sitting at around 50%. So this thing should fire up the way it sits right now. And it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. Because why would it? 
So it appears as if this battery unfortunately didn't come fully charged. And you wanna be careful when you buy batteries. This one I got on Amazon and unfortunately, I hope it turns out to be a good battery. I like to do factory replacement, so actually getting another HP branded battery, but unfortunately I couldn't find one for this computer, so I had to get a generic one. And a lot of times generic batteries come with questionable quality. Some of them are great and some of them aren't so great. Unfortunately, you don't know which one is which until you buy it and try it out. So this battery right now currently has 7% of a charge. That is not the way that you should ship a battery. You should not ship a lithium ion battery completely dead. Unfortunately, it could have adverse effects on the lifespan of the battery. You usually want it to be about 50% when it's in storage. You don't want it fully charged and you don't want it completely dead. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge this battery up and hopefully once it charges up, it'll have a long life. And if it doesn't, well, then I guess I'll have to replace it again. If this video was helpful to you, then please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.